story of how a Pennsylvania Dutch sister and brother, Faye and Lawrence Kopp, developed a first-class collection of butterflies and moths while staying home on the farm. Their story begins here in the Mahantunga Valley of central Pennsylvania, an isolated rural community between Harrisburg and Sunbury on the east side of the Susquehanna River. Its rocky soil makes for hard farming. Those who survive are tough, insular, and proud, supported by the Lutheran and German Reformed traditions. Faye is the last of her family. All of the others, Lawrence, their parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents, are buried at Salem Church in the village of Rough and Ready. Her earliest known ancestor was Reuben Weary, a 19th century carpenter who also hired out as a farmhand when he needed money. Reuben kept an account book in German and later in English of his work. He made coffins because many people died young. He repaired clock cases and farm equipment, built and repaired furniture, and helped neighbors with the endless plowing. He even drew a picture of a proposed slant front desk. Pennsylvania Dutch, a German dialect, was the primary language of the valley and of Faye's family. I spoke Dutch. Yes, everyone in the family talked about Dutch. With the passing of Lawrence and neighbors of their generation, Faye only speaks Dutch to herself now and to her cat, Callie. But she remembers the hymns and the folk songs of her youth, frequently sung at camp meetings or while shucking corn under a harvest moon. For instrumental music, there were neighbors with fiddles and guitars. Plus, there was a rough and ready band with its distinctive uniforms. Farming and carpentry were family trades for decades. Each generation had its own tool chest. This is a chest of James Monroe, Faye's grandfather. On this bench, he made Mahantunga furniture and repaired farm tools. This is the bed that James Monroe made for his wife, Mary Mariah. My grandfather said she snored too much. So she moved in another room by herself. Well, he put the steeple up all by himself. He also helped to build the church, inside and outside. James Monroe's brother and sister-in-law got the farm, so Faye's grandparents decided to head west with their two daughters, Celia and Minnie, Faye's mother. Well, he worked in the lumber camps and the mother and grandmother took in washing and sewing for the people who worked there. My grandfather couldn't stand the work anymore. It was too hard, so he came back to Chinook and got a job there. Grandfather's brother and his wife took care of grandmother, great-grandmother. And when she died, they got sick too. So grandfather and grandmother and mother moved back here again. At that time, the farm was primarily in apple orchards. In the winter, Faye's grandfather made baskets for apples, potatoes, laundry, and other uses. The women did the gardening and fed the hogs and chickens. They made apple butter and soap. Yes, she made a wood fire under the kettle. She boiled it three times, yes. Faye grated the soap to make chips used on wash day. Lawrence carried the water and Mother and I washed it. Canning was also a major chore. She usually made 500 quarts in the year. All kinds of fruit, pumpkin, applesauce. The family supplemented what they made and raised by going to the general store over in Rough and Ready, a mile and a half across the fields. One day, Faye's father, Joseph, walked to the store three times because, being colorblind, he kept getting the wrong fabric for his wife, Minnie. There was also a traveling peddler 
who routinely came to the farm and sold goods and notions from his horse-drawn wagon. Joseph Kopp came from the next valley north and a village optimistically named Gowan City. Some of his family were miners, but one brother owned a general store, while another owned a pool hall. Joseph met his future wife, Minnie, at a dance hall. At Hepler's Hotel, they had a dancing classes and dancing music, and mother taught dancing, and father came over and did the calling. Lawrence was born in 1922. Faye, shown here with her grandparents James Monroe and Mary Mariah, was born in 1924. As a girl, their mother Minnie had attended Stein's, a one-room schoolhouse a mile away and across the creek. Faye and Lawrence later attended the same school, and it wasn't until going to school that they learned English. As the older sibling, Lawrence was very protective of his sister, who showed the shyness still retained today. He stood up for Faye, even to their teacher. Yes, I don't know what I did, but she told me to put my hands out, and she was going to hit me with the ruler. And Lawrence saw it, and he quickly ran to my seat and grabbed the ruler out of her hands and broke it in half and gave it back to the teacher. <laughs> it was during the eighth grade that Faye's talent at drawing was noticed by her new teacher. He said I was very talented in art. And they sent me to art school. Bloomsburg College it was back then. He even offered to pay my way, but Dad didn't like that. I guess they both, both mother and dad, wanted me to stay here and not go away. Lawrence started high school, but dropped out. He left high school. He got into an argument with another student. I don't know what the argument was about, but Lawrence told him he was never coming back to school anymore. He preferred the fields and woods to the classroom. He took up hunting, a long family tradition, rabbits, pheasants, and squirrels, which helped provide Faye's school lunch. I had rabbits and a uh, butter sandwich. Lawrence and his father plowed over the orchards to make tillable fields, and the two of them began farming. The family also began raising turkeys and building large sheds for the birds. Joseph started doing carpentry work at several area collieries and did construction work with his father-in-law, James Monroe. They built a lot of houses around here in the valley and over in the other valley, Valley View and Higgins. Meanwhile, Lawrence took up trapping. In one month, he caught 32 foxes, 18 skunks, and 11 raccoons. Lawrence sold the skins and had some turned into wraps, which he also sold. To supplement his trapping income, he began photographing himself trapping and wrote accompanying articles, which he sold to periodicals like Pennsylvania Game News. Often, his articles appeared in an issue with a cover illustrated by Ned Smith, and the two men knew each other. He wrote, Everything about nature, trapping mostly, how to trap foxes, how to trap a skunk, a weasel. 